Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronicspedia. Today in this video, I am going to explain about the basics of reset domain crossing. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and make sure you hit the bell icon so that you receive all the further updates. Let's get started. So uh, before I explain the, the reset domain crossing, I would like to explain about the two concepts of the reset. That is, first one is reset recovery and reset removal. So what is reset recovery and what is reset removal? So basically reset recovery is something like uh, you know, setup timing. So uh, it's amount of the time before the rising edge of the clock that the reset should be stable. So now if I draw it like this right. So if we have this is clock. Okay. So now this is my clock and I have a, a active low reset which is a reset 10. Assume this is initially asserted okay and then I'm going to deassert this somewhere over here okay it's like this okay I'm deasserting this reset now here we have I have this my passage of the clock so uh, there will be some window okay here this is my so this is my you know uh, clock edge and this is a okay here this is we call it as recovery and this is my removal okay this is like a setup so before this rising edge of this clock so we need this reset to be stable that is called reset recovery and after the rising edge of the clock this reset has to be stable it cannot uh, change its value for some duration that is uh, you know denoted as uh, re uh, reset removal okay now this is applicable only for the reset deassertion okay it's not like when the reset is getting asserted we don't care for it because when the reset is asserted so that time that your entire design goes under reset so we don't care about the functionality so what we are concerned is only when there is a reset is getting deasserted. Here, if you see the reset is getting deasserted, and uh, we care about this whether the reset is changing whether at this uh, active edge of the uh, flock, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, rising edge of the clock, and then uh, uh, so we have to meet this timing. Okay, so basically, this uh, you know reset recovery and reset removal times. We sh these are the kind of a static checks that will be done in the by the STA team. That's the static team analysis team. So they will check for this all of the asynchronous resets in the design and uh, they will check whether this you know it's meeting this requirements or not properly. So now uh, what happens if we violate this? So if we violate this then similarly we will end up in, in kind of a metastable conditions because your design might uh, you know whatever when this is changing during this uh, you know um, uh, the reset recovery and removal time if the reset changes the deassertion changes at that window so then the subsequent design that uh, your uh, models can go under the metastable conditions so which we want to avoid so now uh, this is about the reset recovery and the reset removal now i'll explain uh, the uh, you know how what is actually the reset domain crossing so reset domain crossing is you know kind of a similar to the clock domain crossing but here in the clock domain crossing we care for the the data which is crossing the boundary of one clock to another clock but here we'll check for the you know signal which is called crossing the boundary of one from one reset domain to another reset domain let me draw that and i'll try to explain that you know what exactly is the reset domain crossing So assume uh, we have some here. Yeah, this is my D flop and this is the Q and this is the clock and I have a reset N1 and then this is a signal which goes to the second block which is or a second flop which is having the same clock okay the clock is the same uh, okay and uh, the reset getting connected to this is rs reset n2 okay now if you see this signal okay which is launched on from by this flop so it's getting captured over here so this signal is crossing the boundary of this from the reset 1 to reset 2 
Now, what is the issue with this? Okay, so in the design, so, so the, you, you can say that there is a clock is you know uh, the same, and the data is just uh, you know uh, you know going from one uh, uh, it's go just going from one clock to another clock. The clock, but the reset, if you see, the reset is you know two different reset. Now, what happens is now assume um, if you uh, have this uh, block, right? Like what happens? Um, if this signal, okay, whatever that is going from here, one uh, this flop to the second flop. Now at that window, so what happens if my reset to this block changes, right? The, I mean, to this particular flop it changes, then the data can get corrupted, and then we will have the output that is the you know metastable data. Okay, so metastable data. Here again, whenever I say it's a, you know um, you know the metastable with respect to reset, it's always I mention with respect to the deassertion of the reset. Okay, so it's always the deassertion of the reset that ca can cause the you know um, you know data to be corrupted because when the reset is uh, you know asserted, so that time we don't care because the output will be kind of a stable value. You don't care because it's an asynchronous reset and we don't care about the what is the output because it's always under a you know. Uh, um, some initial value or it can be assigned to some known values but uh, the deassertion causes the problem so this is the you know basic uh, you know reset domain crossing concept uh, i will come up with the you know what are the different techniques or the what are the ways to handle this you know reset domain crossing in my next video please do let me know about the uh, if you have any query related to this basics of this reset domain crossing in the comment section i'll be happy to help thank you